Hi Matrix and welcome to this finance video on Growth and Decay Part 1, a recap of Grade 10 and 11 finance, brought to you by the Answer Series. Let's start by revising the concept of growth. We work with two types of growth, simple increase and compound increase. The most significant difference between them is how the interest is calculated. For simple increase, interest is calculated on the principal amount, and for compound increase, it is calculated on the accumulated amount. To understand these further and to see the impact they have on growth over several time periods, we will illustrate each using the same initial information. These next two slides consider the growth for n years for both simple and compound increase. In each case of growth, we start the illustration using an original amount of 100 Rand and an interest rate of 10%. Remember to pause at any point along the way where you may feel the need to relook at something. Looking first at simple increase, to calculate the interest after one time period, in this case one year, we calculate 10% of 100 Rand, which is 10 Rand. Because for simple increase the interest is always calculated on the original amount, the interest added each year remains 10 Rand. Therefore, after the first year, the simple increase A would be 110 Rand. After the second year, A would be 120 Rand. After the third, 130 Rand. And after the fourth, 140 Rand, etc. etc. If we expand the scenario for n time periods, we see that we must add this 10 Rand n times. In other words, to our original value, we must add the rate of growth times the original value times the number of time periods. Bringing in our unknowns P, I and N, the equation looks like this. Then rearranged and factorized gives us our simple increase formula. Now considering compound increase, also with an original value of 100 Rand, and a rate of increase of 10%. To calculate the interest after one time period, we also first calculate 10% of the 100 Rand, which is 10 Rand. The difference for compound increase, though, is the amount we add each year needs to be recalculated at 10% of the accumulated amount after each time period. Therefore, growth after one year will be the 100 Rand plus 10 Rand, which is 110 Rand. After the second year, however, the interest would be calculated on the accumulated amount of 110 Rand. In other words, A after two years would be 110 Rand plus 10% of 110 Rand, which is 110 Rand plus 11 Rand, which is 121 Rand, and so on. And if we expand this scenario for n time periods, we see that the exponent correlates to the number of time periods. Bringing in our unknowns P, I and N, the equation looks like this, our compound increase formula. So here are the two formulae we use when working with growth, one for simple increase and the other for compound increase. Let's do a quick recap on what the variables in the formulae stand for. As one gets deeper into the finance topic, which formula to use is often where learners get stuck or confused. And for this reason, making sure your theory knowledge and understanding is solid right from the beginning is a great gift you can give yourself. All four variables appear in both formulae and represent the same things. The P represents the original value or amount and is often referred to as the principal value or the present value. A represents the increase value or amount after growth. Some examples of this could be the size of a population over time, the number of cells in bacteria over time, the value of an investment over time, and these are just a few concepts. The important concept to remember with a value of A is that it represents the value of an increased amount after a certain period. I is the rate of growth or the interest rate, and N is used to represent the number of time periods and these could be days, hours, months, years, etc. Let's have a look at this worked example, which provides a great illustration of the difference between the two types of growth. 
it is also a great opportunity to check your substitution skills. Take the information given, P20, I0,4 and N12, and substitute in each case into P, I and N. Through calculations, the answer for the simple increase is 116, and for compound increase is 1133,88. Note here the curly equal sign, which indicates that this answer is rounded off. These answers differ greatly and clearly illustrate the difference in the impact of growth of the two formulae. The difference between these two growth patterns, which are illustrated here, speaks for itself. Each case starts on the vertical axis at 20. The increase for simple interest is at a constant rate, hence the straight line, whereas for the increase in the compounding process, we end up with an exponential curve. If we look at the growth patterns in each case, the compounding growth starts differing significantly from the simple growth over time. And if we were to reflect on real life representations of these two patterns, let's say if we were talking about financial investments, there is no doubt we'd be keen on the compounding growth option. Whereas if we were talking about bacteria, suddenly the simple increase is possibly more favorable. There are also two formulae for decay, simple decrease and compound decrease. The big difference with these compared to our increase formulae is that they have subtraction signs as opposed to addition signs. Again, we have our four variables that represent the same for each formula. This time A represents the reduced amount over time as the value of something decreases or depreciates and I is the rate of decay or the rate of depreciation. P is still the original or principal value, and N the number of time periods. Some important terminology knowledge is that simple decrease can also be referred to as straight line depreciation, and that compound decrease can be referred to as reducing balance depreciation. Let's look at this worked example now. Substitute in the values for P. I and N into each of the formulae. For simple decrease, we get an answer of zero. We will look further at this when we see the graphical representation of the scenario. And for compound decrease, we get an approximate answer of 6,97. Let's have a look now at how this presents graphically. Again, starting at 20 on the vertical axis, the simple decrease reduces at a constant rate. That it is possible to get an answer of zero is illustrated nice and clearly here. Getting an answer of zero happens after 10 time periods, corresponding with our answer of zero in our calculation. For compound decrease, you will never get an answer of zero. The compound decrease again produces an exponential curve, which if we continue past the 10 time periods, we will see clearly that it will never touch the horizontal axis. In other words, it will never reach zero. The scrap value of an item often lies within this part of the graph. If you take a car, for example, even when it can no longer be used, it can be sold for its parts, so its value will never be zero. This brings us to the end of part one of Growth and Decay. In part two, we will look at application of these four formulae. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.